Magical thinking, you know, is a slippery slope. Sometimes it's harmless enough, but other times it's quite dangerous. Uh, personally, I'm opposed to that kind of fakery, so I have no reservations at all about exposing these people and their illusions for what they really are. I've investigated the claims of hundreds of psychics. People aren't always happy with my conclusions, but I do have my supporters. In 1986, I was honored with a MacArthur Award. Unfortunately, most of the prize money went into defending myself against a series of libel suits related to one of my earliest and most controversial investigations. The subject was Uri Geller, a young Israeli who claimed to have supernatural powers. His remarkable affinity for metal and his psychic abilities are well documented all over the world. In the early 1970s, Geller became a superstar, the most famous psychic in the world. Okay, just a second, look at me. Visualize everything that you drew once more. He claimed to read people's minds. I'm gonna show what I got, and if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, but it really came very strong in. It could be Two mountains with a round thing on, or two people. I, I, uh, Can I show? I, yeah, I'd like to. Am I wrong? You're right. I'm right. Good. That's what I got. Oh, that's. He claimed to bend keys with his mind. I know you're going to think this is a setup, friends, and old Tom has never conned you on anything. This, this guy <laughs> is bending this key by rubbing it. It was bent at about a, a, a one degree angle when you started out, and it's coming up on 45 degrees now and still moving. <laughs> you're thinking bend, is that what you're yes, doing? Yes, I'm saying bend. You're saying bend, yes. hard, soft? Uh, no, I'm saying bend, 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 and sometimes I say bend, is baby. Just you know, just but Geller was yes. best known for his way with spoons. Hold the tip of the spoon very, very gently. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm trying to melt the metal down. Yes, you see, I feel it. It's, yes, going. it's getting loose. It. Yeah. And there's no force at all in my hands. Yes, look what's like happening. This. There's no force at all. Look, the whole, you see, it's becoming like The whole like thing's plastic. ready to fall off. It's, and touch it here where I'm stroking it, there is absolutely no... That is eerie. <laughs> I have a wisdom tooth. <laughs> If you can see, oh, the metal is beginning to crack here. It's breaking. And, yeah, you see? And it's, he's just look, it's, be, it's becoming, it's like look, paddy wax. You see? Look. And keep, keep okay, stroking it this. here. Look, you see the crack? No, don't, don't. You see, the crack is becoming bigger. Yep. I melt the metal down, so, so. Wow. I yeah. want it to bend. I just say bend. Yeah, you melted it. You see? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Keep stroking your keys more. And people at home want your watches to start working, or if there is a radio that is broken, want it to start working. Television broken, just wanted all those broken things. Now, what Geller was saying effectively was that wanting things could make them so. I felt that claim had to be challenged. The media, even some scientists, were taking the Geller phenomena seriously. So I decided to show, for starters, that I could at least duplicate these effects using trickery. Now, a key can be displayed in such a way that it looks like it's bending. For example, just by stroking it, you'd swear that it's bending right up before your eyes. Magicians call this process ratcheting. But to do this, the key has to be bent in advance. The hard part, of course, is how to go about bending the key without letting them catch you. Now, there are several ways. I could, for example, take it and press the tip against the top of the table. That would do it. Or, in shifting my chair backwards or forwards, as I just did, I could have taken it and dropped it below the level of the table and pressed the tip on the chair I'm sitting on, which is exactly what I just did. Did I fool you? Mentalists have been duplicating hidden drawings for years. If Mr. Geller had chosen to use trickery, he could have used any of a number of techniques. One favorite involves turning your back and covering your eyes while the drawing is being made. Now, I've always wondered why you would cover your eyes while your back is turned.
But melting metal is something else again. It's done something like this. And it gets soft. So I say to it, bend, bend, bend. And it bends. Of course, it does take a little preparation. In fact, it takes a lot of preparation. Now, this isn't proof positive that other demonstrations aren't the result of supernatural power, but isn't this a more reasonable explanation? And then, of course, there was Mr. Geller's appearance on The Tonight Show. I got a call after they booked him to appear. Would you welcome, please, Uri Geller. Johnny had been a magician himself and was skeptical. I was asked to help prevent any trickery. Nice to see you. Thanks. We, uh, we this, have only met... This scares me. This, this scares you? Well, this <laughs> is just, we just got some things together here. And I told I them said, to provide their own props and not to let Geller or his right? people anywhere uh, near them. Also, one of our staff members... Uh, did some drawings which have been sealed in an envelope uh, and I'd like you to take your own pace when you feel like you want to try anything. Right. Do you want to try that particular uh, experiment first? When I'll feel for it. When okay. you think? Sure. We'll start eliminating the ones that do not have the water. All right, without touching them. He is really suspicious. You know? <laughs> I'm having a hard time with you. Okay, I don't mean to be, all right? I really no, no, don't. Just, just keep looking. Okay, let me rest a little, all right? All right. You know, I'm surprised because before this program, your producer came and he read me at least 40 questions you're going to ask me. Well, I can ask you all kinds of questions if you'd like, if you'd like me to ask no, you have, questions. I have to have time. And, uh, um... Dark, we are back. Your Uri was telling me you, you, you don't feel, what, strong tonight? I don't Is feel that... strong. It's not all tonight. Right now I'm, feel, I'm feeling being pressed and then I can't... Well, I'm not trying to press you. I really not. Uh, you no, know, you're only I'm... telling me, well, will you try that or that or that? Well, I thought that was the idea of... Uh, <laughs> of uh, no, I, I'm, not, no, I'm not trying to push you down. Much to my surprise, the Tonight Show episode didn't have much effect on Uri Geller's career. Neither did the book that I wrote about him. But eventually, his star faded. Why people are so drawn to the irrational is something that has always puzzled me. I want to be, if I can, as sure of the world, the real world around me, as is possible. Now, you can only attain that to a certain degree, but I want the greatest degree of control. I don't, I've never involved myself in narcotics of any kind. I don't smoke. I don't drink. Because that can easily just fuzz the edges of my rationality, fuzz the edges of my reasoning powers. And I want to be as aware as I possibly can. That means uh, giving up a lot of uh, fantasies that might be comforting in some ways. But I'm willing to give that up in order to live in an actually real world, as close as I can get to it. During the 1980s, I entered a world that I found filled with fantasy and rife with abuse, the world of faith healing. I developed a special interest in a television evangelist named Peter Popoff. And God told me, he said, you smite that cancer with your fist. At the time, Popoff was pulling in nearly $4 million a year healing people on his miracle crusades. You've got cancer of the stomach? Are you ready for God to burn that cancer out? Here it goes in the mighty... Devil, back off. Back off, devil! Ooh. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You really believe you're healed? Yes. Do you think your cancers are gone now? Yes, I believe that, because God never lies, and we stand in His Word. Praise the Lord. I tell you, from now on, you're going to have a soul of victory in your heart. Amen. To his followers, Popoff seemed to have divine powers. 
Alice, is it Gould? Alice Gould? He knew their names. Stand up, Alice. As well as the afflictions they'd come to cure. God is touching that thyroid condition right now. God is touching your nerves right now. God is touching your eyes. Just lift up your hands, get ready. Here it comes. He also knew the personal details of their lives. You're going to hear good news from Charles before everything is over. I'll tell you, he's going to be completely delivered because of your prayers, because of your faith. Here it comes, complete healing in Jesus. Ooh, mighty name right now, right now, right now. Amen. It's all right to praise the Lord. I suspected that Popoff's revelations were other than divine. The radio scanner we brought to the hall picked up a decidedly worldly source. Hello, Petey. Can you hear me? If you can't, you're in trouble. Popoff was being prompted by his wife through a wireless earpiece. John? Dearie Johnson. She'd gotten her information from prayer cards filled out by the faithful before the show began. She's about to get rid of the walker. You want to get rid of this walker, sister? Oh, glory. How long have you been walking on that walk? About three years. Three years. She lives at 1627 10th Street. 1627 10th Street? Is that right? That's right. She has arthritis all over. Burning this arthritis right out of your body. Take a few steps just to make the devil mad. Hallelujah. That's it. Just move around a little bit. There she goes. Just walk with me. Oh, glory to God. She's not going to need that walker anymore. God's just putting new strength, new health. Burning that arthritis out of her body. Just keep going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was able to arrange for another broadcast of the Miracle Crusade on The Tonight Show. But this time, the wireless prompting was included. In 1987, Peter Popoff declared bankruptcy. Greater is he! Greater is he! The laying on of hands takes on new meaning in the Philippines, where psychic surgeons perform miraculous operations without knives. I investigated this phenomenon, then went on The Tonight Show to demonstrate what I'd learned. Believe me, what you're seeing is strictly special effects. It's sleight of hand and nothing more. And this is the way it looks. A little animal blood and a few chicken parts complete the illusion. A bonus. That's a bit better. Just a second. Just one second now. Maybe better for you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't feel any better? <laughs> oh, no, that doesn't come out. <laughs> 